Okay, so in this video, we're going to provide some examples of how to use Python module telnetlib. So first, we're going to give a basic example where we're looking to get output from a single host. Then we'll take a look at terminal paging and some things that we can do to deal with that. And then the third item on the list there is multiple hosts. So I'll give some examples of, you know, things that I've done when working in a data center environment when dealing with them. And then lastly, parsing tables. Okay, so before we get started, let's take a look at my setup. So on this window station here, I'm at 141. And inside of a virtual machine, I have a Cisco router, and that's at 93. And for Python, I am using version 3.9. Okay, so now for our basic example, where we grab data from a single host. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a file and I'm going to name this file basic. So this will be basic.py. Next, if we take a look at the documentation, you're going to find a couple of examples. So one from a script as well as one from the command line up here. And what we're going to look to do is we're going to look to automate this. So with network automation, we might throw this into a cron job, for example, and we don't want to ever have to supply anything. So the first step in here in the script is going to be to, you know, import the module or from the module. So we're going to do from and then the module. What we're going to import is going to be the class telnet. Next, we'll provide a comment. And this is going to be basic example for a single host. So we're going to put everything inside of a function and the function name is going to be derived from the command that we're going to execute as well as what we're using. This function's purpose is going to be to return logged in users. And the first thing that we're going to put inside of here, like we saw in those examples, is going to be to instantiate, right? So Within the Telnet class, if we take a look at the constructor, you're going to see the host variable. And if you read inside of here as well as the documentation, you're going to see that that's the only variable that's required to be set. So when we instantiate. So that host variable, I said we're going to put everything in there, but we're going to leave a couple variables outside the function. The first one is going to be host. And this one is 10.0.0.93. And when we instantiate, we're going to look to store this inside of a variable, right? So the reason that we do that is simple. We want to access the methods within the class instance. So a couple of methods that we're going to be commonly using here. The first one is going to be read until. And read until is kind of like wait until. All right, so with read until, we have to supply a match in bytes. And if we are going to do that, we saw in the documentation they were supplying a B in front of a string, and that's the way that we can provide a byte string. So this could be either a lowercase or an uppercase B, and we'll stick with, again, what was in the documentation for lowercase. And over here, so let me rewind for a second. So once we instantiate this, we're going to establish a connection. And the next thing we're going to look to do with Telnet is to authenticate. So the first prompt we're going to encounter is going to be the username prompt. So we're going to look to match this. And like I said, read until is kind of like a wait until because it's not going to execute this next statement here, this write, until it matches the string that we put over here. All right, and over here, now for the right, we also have to supply bytes. So for bytes, we can do this a couple ways. And again, in the documentation, it referred to two ways. And we're going to keep it this way. So we're going to do our username variable up here. All right, and the username is going to be admin, and the password is going to be Cisco. All right, so we're going to stick with this method here. And we could have just as easily provided a B with the string admin in it. But 
if you're looking to use for example if you're checking this into a repo right and you're looking to use like a config parser or something like that then you'll most likely store it in a variable first and then you know call it down here so we're going to do username dot and we're going to encode and this is another way that you can actually provide a byte string all right so we're going to encode this with ascii all right and then we'll concatenate on the new line over here all right and we're going to use these methods kind of like in a pair so we're going to do them both for authentication as well as for executing commands all right so once we get the username prompt and we supply the username the next prompt that we're looking to see right is going to be the password so we're going to type password here so it'll be the password prompt and then down here password all right and then next thing will be to execute the command and the command that we're going to execute is going to be show users so once we authenticate the next thing is the prompt and the prompt in the prompt we're looking to match something right so it's going to actually be a pound sign so within a lot of your networking equipment as well as you know your linux systems you're going to see a common you know a common character in your prompt especially a root prompt right is going to be a hashtag so we're going to after we authenticate we're going to expect to see that hashtag and then down here we're going to execute the command and then the command is going to be show users once we execute this command again we're going to look to get a prompt all right so over here we are returned a prompt and then down here um, actually we're going to get rid of this guy so we're going to store the output that we get here into a variable and I'm going to call this variable std out. All right. And if we take a look at read until, right. So if we look at this one more time, so we not only have to supply bytes, but we're also returned bytes. And what we want to do is we want to put this back to what Python uses by default. And that is UTF-8. So we're going to decode this and we're going to decode this to utf dash eight all right and then we'll print this out all right and then we'll call the function now before we run this what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna log in with telnet just so that we can verify the steps are correct all right so let me save this let me open up a command line let me telnet to that router All right, so the first thing that we get over here is the username prompt, right? And we supply that, and then next thing is the password, and then we're returned to prompt, as we see over here. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to execute show users, all right? And we're returned the logged in users. So now if we test out the script, which is on my desktop, we can see that we get the same exact thing. Okay, so now the next thing I'd like to discuss is terminal paging. So now, if you've ever worked in a command line before, I'm pretty sure you've seen this. So for example, if I issue the show run, we know that terminal paging is enabled by this more prompt over here. So what terminal paging actually does is based on the window size when we execute the command to view the file, it adjusts the output to the size of the window and then gives us the more prompt to essentially let us know that there's more to show. Now, obviously, when we're trying to grab data from a device using an automation script, this can cause problems. And what we would need to do is either add some code, you know, for example, a while loop to correct for this, or more easily, we can just execute a command to disable it per the user session. So to illustrate this, we'll just do terminal length and then zero. And then if we issue the show run command again, we can see that we get the whole file. And now if we take a look over here on our script, we just made a, you know, added another pair in here. So we can actually execute that command, issue the show run, and now let's test that it works. So if I scroll through my command history, run it, we can see that we get the whole file. 
Okay, so now let's expand on our script a little bit. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to incorporate now running this on multiple hosts. So first, if we take a look in my environment, I've actually added another router. Okay, so one is at 93, the other is at 94. And when running this, I'm also going to give an example of doing so in a data center environment. So for example, one thing that I've encountered when doing that is running into different prompts. So for example, another common device that you'll find in the data center is Nexus. And Nexus has a different username prompt, which they actually call login instead. So we can use the expect method here to provide a list rather than just one with the read until. Now this is still going to be byte strings, but now we'll just be a list of them all right and that was log in all right and then over here just close this out we can also see when we hover over this that we're returned to tuple so it'll actually show us the match and i can store this then into a variable which i'll call prompt match all right and then we'll print this out just so that we can see it Okay, and some other adjustments I'm going to make here. So um, when we're creating this, we're creating a module, and I always like to run or include all my modules in main. So we're going to get rid of this guy here. So we're going to actually loop this through, you know, in main, and we'll provide that argument there. The other thing is we're going to get rid of this guy. And instead of a show run, so we want to see all the output in one screen, right? So rather than scrolling off, I'll just edit the command. So we got show users. I'll save this. And then if we go over to main, I've already got this scripted out, as you can see over here. All right, so we're importing our basic module. Okay, and then down here, we're providing our host list. And now we're looping through the hosts. So in that basic module, we're running this function and we're allowing this variable to be passed to it. Okay, so now let's test it out. So if I come over here, let me clear this and then let me do a Python and then main. All right, so we can see we've got router one, all right, the match that it used to log in. So this was at index zero. So if I go back over to our script, we can see that it matched the username prompt at index zero. All right, you can see the match, which is also over here, and then the line that it matched over here. All right, and then down here for router two, we had the, the same exact thing. Okay, so now for our last example, we're gonna demonstrate parsing a table. And obviously this can be done many different ways. But the two main ways that you'll typically see are to parse a table either into a list or into a dictionary. Obviously, this is going to depend on whatever your application needs, right? So what I've gone and done over here in basic.py is I've replaced our command with show MAC address table. And then over here in main, I'm simply just printing that table out. So we're going to start right there. So I'm going to do a Python and then I'm going to run this. So main.py. So this is the cam table that we get back. And now over here, I've created a script already just to save some time and I'm gonna go through it with you. So first I'm gonna import that. So I'm gonna do an import and this is going to be parse and it's gonna be parse std out. And we'll import this as parse. All right, and then down here now, I'm going to delete this and I'm going to say parse dot and then the function. So the function name, you can see it underneath there, it's to list Mac, all right? And as an argument to this, we're gonna put the cam table over here. I'll get rid of that just to test things out. All right, so now that we have that in here, let's go over to the file. And in the file, I've got these print statements so you can see it as I go along. So we just saw what the table looks like. Okay, so here's what we got. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to create a list out of this, okay? And the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna split on a new line. Now there is one thing that I wanna point out here. So this is gonna depend on, you know, the device type. So now over here, let me just go about 
I'm commenting this, save, bring the terminal back up, let's run it. All right, and this is what we get. So we can see each of those lines, right, are now a part of a list, right? So now the next thing that we're gonna do here is we're gonna just loop through this. So we're gonna say for each item in the list, right? And because we're dealing with the cam table here, a common you know, way that you're gonna go about using this data is obviously with your cam table, it's showing you your directly connected devices off of physical ports. So what we're going to do is we're just going to weed out all the ones that were learned through the port channel by using this if statement here. And then over here on this next line, so we're importing our regular expression, right? So RE. And then over here, this one here is basically taking care of any or varying length of white space, right? And what we're doing is we're replacing that with a comma. And then we're stripping off any, you know, any of the end white space. So now let's print this and let's see what this gives us. So I'll save this again, run it. All right, and this is what we get. Okay, so now the next thing that we're gonna do here is we're gonna split this once again, but this time we're gonna split it on a comma. So we're gonna basically take each line, make it a list, all right? And we'll see that with this right here. So now if I save this, print it again, and that's what we get. Okay, so now we have it as a list, we can work with this much better. And then if we take a look at the last one here, we're basically just gonna take each of those lists and make them part of a master list, right? So now if we do this one more time, just for completeness here, all we're doing is appending each of those lists inside of a list.